indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, and other civil organizations have accused the Nigerian army of human rights violation. These alleged human rights violations were said to have occurred in the course of counterinsurgency operations in the northeastern Nigeria and in the southeastern part, particularly during an internal security operation involving members of the IPOB whose rally turned violent. The allegations leveled on the army and specifically some senior officers include alleged cases of arbitrary arrests, unlawful detention, torture, forced disappearance and extrajudicial execution. These allegations led to the withdrawal and denial of USA and UK visas to some senior army officers. Similarly, there were cases of officers whose names were not included in the allegation but were also denied visa. Consequently, on the 8th of March 2017, the Nigerian army inaugurated an independent nine-man special board of inquiry to critically investigate the allegations in line with global best practice. We have uh, uh, human rights activists like uh, Mr. Olaole uh, Faponda, who was former Attorney General and Commissioner of Justice of Ekiti State. We also have Mr. Tono Ojuku, who is a director in the National Human Rights Commission. We have some other retired officers in the committee. And we set out... Three months after the investigations, close analysis of submitted documents, photographs, video clips, visits to different parts of the country, interviews and discussions with state governors, religious leaders, civil society organizations in the alleged affected areas, the Nigerian Army Special Board of Inquiries made public its findings on 18th of May 2017. Uh, we, we've not seen anything to do with uh, torture. We see nothing to do with forced disappearance. We talked to the detainees, some of them are self-professed Boko Haram activists who feel they could still fight Nigerian troops given the opportunity again. We talked to them to find out whether some of them were removed individually or as group and they never come back, which would have what would give evidence to force disappearance and something like that. We have not seen anything like that. And then uh, in the east, we also went to all the places where the incident was said to have taken place. We went to Aba, uh, which they say an incident happened on the 9th of February 2016 where 17 people were said to have been shot by soldiers. We went there, we talked to the security man on duty in that place and some of the community leaders. And all of them told us that nothing like that happens. They alleged that some people were buried in the shallow grave along Aba Potakot Expressway. Uh, we asked them, where is the place? And what we saw, they say nine people, but what we saw were more or less effigies of three people or, or whatever, they are there, but there's not nine people. We also uh, went to Unko. Uh, where uh, they said that uh, uh, people who are uh, worshipping God were killed in St. Edmund Church. And then uh, some of them were picked. And we talked to the resident press and some of the residents in the area, they confirmed to us that nothing like that happened. Soldiers did not even enter the street where the church is, not to talk of kill uh, people. We went to the bridgehead where they block the uh, uh, movement of traffic in and outside. And... Uh, Amnesty alleged that 60 people were killed in that place. We spoke to the state governor, an number of state governor. We stopped, spoke to the commissioner of police, DSS, and uh, some community leaders. And there was no any report of anybody who died. After the public presentation, the board members also had an interactive session with members of the Amnesty International. We are not here to sing the song of the military. We are here to hear once again your allegations tell you our findings. We went to all the detention facilities in this country where Boko Haram suspects are kept. We talk with the inmates themselves, individually and as group. And then we talk to the handlers, we talk to the, each of the state governments where these facilities exist, where the uh, allegations were said to have taken place. We also talk to some human rights specialists in some of the states and then uh, I want to also assure you that in all the states we visited particularly in the east we created a secretariat and we told the press to inform the general public that uh, the committee had been set up to investigate human rights violations against the airport activities and we are here.
anybody has anything to tell us, individuals or group, middle the secretariat, we gave our numbers. You have the major allegations, and we have them also. We have summarized them. So if we can take those allegations one by one, particularly as it affects those senior officers, because if anybody is going to go, it's going to be tried. So we need evidence to support that trial. If we can take these allegations one by one, and then you at least you are able to discuss with you. So we agree, or we agree to disagree uh, in the end. But what is important is we would have had you first hand, and you have had the evidence we have. So my suggestion is we take the allegations one by one. Particularly, we start with those senior officers serving at that that were alleged to have perpetrated civil rights, I mean, uh, human rights abuses. And one would think we now take the general allegation of uh, all this extrajudicial killing, forced disappearance, torture, and so on. Because if we finish our work and we're able to find somebody who has a problem, it has to be tried. And if it has to be tried, it is only this committee that can provide the evidence. That's why we feel you will help the military to provide evidence so that we can use it. I mean, the military can use it to try it. I just reassure you that Amnesty International is very keen for us to know the troops as well as to support any form of independent inquiry into the crisis and the allegations of human rights violations that have occurred in this situation. And Thank you very much also for reaching out to us and for explaining the mandate of your board. Um, we actually had a few questions regarding the terms of reference, so it's even good that you actually started off with this. And I understand that the terms of reference that was shared with your last letter actually narrowed down some of the focus to some of the allegations raised by Amnesty International. And so we just want to put it on the record too that we are not, we don't dispute, we only research and share that information and we leave it to the national authorities to actually now take this forward in terms of the work and in terms of ensuring that um, proper investigation is done. And we would like to know how, you know, like what methodology that you are putting in place. You've already given a brief about that, what methodology you're putting in place in order to show that you can um, address the allegations and what next steps will be taken along that. And we know that you are speaking with us as Amnesty International, but are there other actors, because you refer also to other organizations, are there other actors, institutions you plan to also interview? And it's good that you mentioned that you've already visited some of these places of detention, and it's good to know how well even the victims and witnesses who be communicated to how well their um, protection is secured and whether this is guaranteed as well. Especially when that information could be linked to people who have been identified as procuring um, these abuses. And most importantly, we really want to know if the reports of your investigation will be public. I know you mentioned that you notified the public that this report has been set up. But then, as we have seen, Sometimes some of these reports are not very clear with that they would this be possible. And would you be willing to share such reports with us as today we are interfering us to be as well? And what are the next steps? After the information gathering, after the investigation, what next? What do we expect to see from your report? The issue of uh, the methodology, like I told you, uh, is simple. Unless you want us to go theoretical. But if you just want us to explain our uh, approach, uh, first of all, we, we've gone through all the allegations that uh, were mentioned one by one against individuals and then the group ones. Then we visited all the detention facilities. And like I said earlier, in all the detention facilities, we are briefed by the handlers uh, what is going on. And then our mandate was also to find out their yeah, feeding habits, how are they feeling, and they will be fed in line with some international uh, business standard or something like that. Then the medical facility. Is there any medical facility attached to the administration facility? Are there doctors, medicine, and so on? 
and then sanitation. How is the sanitation of the inmates in the place? And then the accommodation. Is it enough for the number of people that are put inside? Uh, what other issues uh, may affect the health of the uh, inmates, like the uh, ventilation and other things there? Then another important thing is how, what is the relationship between the handlers and the inmates? Is it that of quality? Is it that of uh, cats and dogs? Is it uh, that of master and servant? And so on and so forth. So we took a guided tour of all the facilities, we went one by one. And then in the process, we are allowed to talk to the inmates one by -on one individually and as groups to find out how they are being treated. For instance, when we talk about cases of uh, false disappearance, some of the places when commanders were not on the ground, they were not the ones that were there when the incident occurred. But the image were the same image. So we talk to the image, for instance, to find out was there any time when you were in this place when some of you were taken away and they don't come back? You know, it's very important yes. because they will not hide it. Because we introduced ourselves, I won't tell them who we are. And when we come, it's in their best interest that we are there. So they don't need to hide it. So they should tell us exactly what they are going through in the place. We also uh, talk to them uh, individually. There are some of them who single out. So, we also talk to the handlers separately because the handlers are in two categories. The senior military officers who are in charge of the place and the soldiers who are actually staying every minute with the detainees to stop them. We inspected their toilets, their kitchen, and uh, even the type of food they eat. So, we believe this way we will be able to to relatively right on the, the medical facility, welfare and sanitation, and so on and so forth. We've also asked them individually and in group whether at any given time they are carried out for torture. It was very important. We saw some of them with wounds which they sustained during arrest, and some of them came with the wounds. We asked them to find out well, this wound inflicted on you here, no, they came with it. We told you uh, our finding there, one way there. So we discussed. So we either agree or agree to disagree. But what is important is you've heard from us, we've heard from you, and then uh, uh, you take your own decision, we take our own decision. Just like we rightly say, you don't go to people. We too cannot go to people. But if we want to say somebody must be prosecuted, we have to agree to them. So we have gone to the ground and seen what we have seen. So you help us with some of the evidence that will help if somebody is found with hope that it can easily be prosecuted. So we can start the names of it there in the book. If you want to, we can take the uh, book. I think you are referring to. Oh, sorry, if you don't mind. Yes, next sentence. Thank you. Um, if you don't mind, uh, uh, I'm allowed to say a few words. Uh, yes. First of all, I agree to this with myself. Yes. Uh, well, my fear fully if you build the one from your side to make my stay home. Okay. We'll do that. Yeah, yeah I think it's muted now. Thank you very much for joining, guys. My name is Sanat Dalai. I'm the Africa Research and Advocacy Director. I've been involved in our work on Nigeria for a couple of years. So. I'm happy to have joined you uh, in this discussion to contribute um, to addressing some of your questions. Um, I'm just going to make a few points. Um, one, by way of reaction to your explanation of the methodology in terms of response. I do not want to continue the discussion on, on this issue any further, but for purposes of the record, but I thought we should raise a few summaries across now. And all of these points, obviously, will ensure that they are communicated to you in writing once we have also fully asserted as your, your resources to give us in this table now uh, and, and, and ensure that we respond back to your observations on the methodology in terms of reference in our follow-up course on that. Um, but having said that, let me start. 
Islamist International, and we, we think that this is a good opportunity to start uh, uh, the, the conversation with Amnesty International and to enable at the end of the day victims of various atrocities in Nigeria to receive justice. I mean, that's the ultimate um, uh, vision what we all you know, uh, seem to share. Um, I would also like to appreciate the Thank you for agreeing to meet us in this arrangement. It's not ideal, I know. Uh, myself and Solomon are at times struggling to hear each and every page of the point you're making. Uh, but we make sure what we want through the reports once again will address any gap that may exist. But thank you for agreeing on these lines. Few points um, in terms of reaction to the explanation of the methodology in terms of reference. One, I noticed, the Chairman, as we began your discussion, uh, that you're here mainly to hear your details, uh, allegations, uh, details of the allegations we've made against the Nigerian military and specifically against senior military officials, also which are retired at the moment. Um, and you, you allude to the fact that the government's red race with us as amnesty. Um, just for the record, we want to get back on this point. Uh, we believe that the ON has the responsibility of investigating any allegations of human rights violations, including and most importantly, allegations that will amount to crimes under international law. It's the responsibility of the government, the onus rest on the government. Our role as civil society organizations, as human rights groups, is to make public the outputs, uh, the outcomes of our investigations, to assist the state to fulfill its obligation to investigate this crime. So let's be clear here that the onus is on the government and on the government to ensure that these investigations are carried out to ensure such credible allegations um, are, are thoroughly investigated. So I just want to put that on both for the record. Few points which are still not really clear to us on the methodology, but I say, as I said, in the interest of time, I want us to wait back and forth on this. The challenge, as I see it, is we are here to discuss today a scope of research that dates back to 2011 um, until present, if not even some, even some allegations even date back to that, earlier than that. Um, it, is, it is not quite clear to me, and I'm sure myself, my colleague, my colleague, sir, will like to it, how exactly your methodology will enable investigation into such a big, wide scope of allegations we're making. Uh, for instance, as you were discussing um, and explaining your centers and speaking to uh, current detainees and etc. You know, we, we left to wonder um, whether that inter investigation, those interviews you've done with current uh, detainees will allow you to understand situations that happened prior to their arrest. So we want to know, you know how many people you actually interviewed from, from, the, from the current detainees, which detention facilities, how long has they been arrested. Some of those allegations could probably relate to incident that happened prior to their address. And the same relates to uh, witnesses, eyewitnesses, residents, and etc. We're also left to wonder, you know, one of the strongest contributions we believe we've made in our successive reports is giving the Nigerian government as many indications as possible how to advance on investigations, including possible sites of mass graves, um, possible perpetrators that we believe should be investigated, and etc. To what extent have you gone to identify those, those suspected mass graves and to what extent have you verified that through forensic examinations and etc. These are all questions that we need to leave to us. But most importantly, I'm sure you will agree with us, one of the complexities of carrying out investigation, particularly such a panel report appointed by, uh, by the military, is that the question as to how inmates will be able to give you credible without fear of reprisal. So we'd like to wonder what are the guarantees against reprisals provided for witnesses, detainees, and others when they give you this information. It would also be useful to clarify that, I guess, in our future correspondences. So these are some of the observations I just like to make immediately on your explanation regarding the terms of reference. Um, and lastly, I mean, before I allow my colleagues uh, to come in, um, uh, maybe I'll come in because my last comment really relates to how to take this conversation forward. Um, and I have some suggestions around that. But before then, sir, if you want to come in with your comments on, on, on the methodology in terms of reference. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant. Um, and again, introducing myself quickly once more. I am a Deputy Director of the Law and Policy Program of Amnesty International. Um, I'm based in London. 
answers. Um, first, I'd like to know whether these visits were warned in, in the sense that the um, administrators of the detention centers would have known that you were attending them. So that's a clarification. I think that's very important about the... Thank you so long. I'm giving it to the chairman now. I will respond to Zoom and then my colleagues will also respond. Now, um, with regards to the issue of uh, uh, on whom the owners of proof is, you say it's the government that is supposed to prove. I have joined by I'm trying to connect by video, but at least I'm now where you're on. Okay, good. We can hear you clearly. Um, the chairman is responding to questions raised. Yeah? Now, I'm talking about the issue of uh, who is to prove the allegation. Um, by your understanding, it's supposed to be the government that will prove the allegation. And I think uh, in all sense of sincerity and for all purposes, investigation, if you allege and say something went wrong, it's you that will prove it and provide evidence. The accusation was against a military, I mean a military organization that belongs to the government. So if the accusation will come from outside, and then it is the military that will provide the proof that the thing was done, and then I don't know what type of investigation is that. The allegation comes from Amnesty International and says that there are extrajudicial killings between social period and social period one social person is in charge. So if you want it is the military that will come and prove that it happened or not, I don't think that is how it's supposed to be. We are independent on our own right. That's why we took time to explain how we accepted to serve on this committee. So we have to find out who alleges what. Now the person that alleges should be able to have evidence. If you make effort in uh, Amnesty's report to show some pictures, and uh, mentioned that you talked to some people and also made interviews and so on. So these are things that the uh, person who accuses is making effort to show proof of the allegation. Now, it is not the military or the government that will show the proof, no. We are on this, we went to the place where the incident was alleged to have happened. We talked to some of the victims. We talk to uh, a lot of the handlers, people who live around the area, people who have stake in the issues. We have spoken with them and we have, we have had their views. So it's only natural for us to come and hear from the person who accuses. So we still feel that it is unlikely that will help us to portray their point with additional evidence so that when we say Officer A is having a problem, it should be tried. We should be able to say this is evidence. We have gone to the ground, we have picked a lot from where the incident happened. And so it's on the basis of that that we are here to hear from Amnesty. We have read the reports. The allegations were clear there. So we have read the reports. But we are asking for additional explanation, additional evidence to be able to uh, make our report balanced and get evidence to support the military. When they are going to try that person, the evidence that we can adduce will help in a successful prosecution. So it's not the military that will now provide the evidence. Then there is no investigation. So secondly, you will talk about uh, the facilities we visited. Uh, we visited all the military detention facilities in the northeast, all of them. And we had unfettered access to the detainees on our own and we spoke to them individually, and we spoke to them as a group. And we also had session with the handlers on their own, and we inspected every part of the detention facilities that we felt is necessary, including kitchens, toilets, the cells, and the surrounding. We have seen for ourselves what happened. And we that the reason why many of our cases fall flat on the face is because of poor investigation.